everyone, Lisa Stones Peck from Spellbound Miniatures here. Welcome to our YouTube channel and our 13 days of Halloween countdown. We're going to do a video every day until Halloween and we're going to build our new Halloween SVG bundle book nook and hopefully you'll join in with us too. If you're a patron, the SVG is free for you this month of October 2020. And if you're a newsletter subscriber, we've just sent out the newsletter update with a discount code. If you've already built the medieval book nook, you have the basic book nook SVG file. So you can just add the Halloween extension and you can purchase that separately on our website too. So let's head over to Design Space. We'll look at what's included in this SVG bundle and see if there's any options you'd like to change before you cut your files. If this is the first time you've used Design Space to upload a file, check out our how-to tech tutorials on how to open SVG zip files, upload them into Design Space and make sure they're the right size before you cut them. Here we are in Design Space. If the file comes in and you think, wow, I can't see it, it's too big, simply come down here and you can reduce the size of it so that you can see it more easily. And always make sure that your settings are in imperial, so they're in inches, and then you'll see that when it comes in, this green one inch square will come in exactly at one inch measurement, and that means this is in 12th scale. In the basic book nook file, you'll see we have two sides, a back and a top and bottom, which are exactly the same, and the plain front frame. These two pieces we will use later on to make a removable top in the Halloween book nook. Of course, you can always cut another rectangle in the back if you need to make hinged access door to backlight your window as we did in the medieval book nook. Thoroughly recommend that you open the Getting You Started PDF and that shows you the key that we use for all the materials and you'll notice on there that brown is chipboard. This is the 2mm Cricut chipboard that we use and it cuts really well and it's a nice consistent product. You will use the purple strong grip mat for this with the knife blade and housing and you'll tape your material to the mat with masking tape to secure it before you cut and don't forget to move your white rollers all the way along to the right hand side of your machine so that they won't mark your chipboard. The, also in the other file you'll notice that we have the extension, the Halloween extension, so we can delete that one and this has all the exciting extra bits that makes this Halloween book nook. You can see in red we have the tree silhouettes. I'm going to do three layers. You can do more or less, that's entirely up to you. Also in red, which is craft board, we've got the window frames, the sash window panels and two relief panels for the front of the headstones. Again, those are optional. We'll go over the window in more depth tomorrow. If you want to make additional changes to any of your headstones, ungroup the whole file and you can see we've just put some random dates on there and used the cutout of a little Celtic cross. Select all of those and attach them and that will make sure that whatever you put on your headstone actually gets cut, debossed or foil tipped onto the actual headstone. If you wanted to put something else on simply select the headstone that you want, go to text Add the text that you'd like, whether it's dates or a name, and make it the font that you would like, depending on whether you'd like to cut this out or deboss it. You'll want a more simple font if you're going to cut it out. And then make sure that it's the right size. Place it on the headstone. Select them both and align them centrally and then you'll want to attach them and that makes sure they end up on the same mat otherwise it will just try and print, cut or draw those letters separately on another mat. 
the black is matte board and I kind of the matte board that I had three layers is just about right but if you've got a thicker matte board you might only want two layers so have a play around with that the blue is the acetate if you wanted to use your Cricut to cut the film for the windows and these are the window surrounds here so let's go back to the studio and see what these pieces look like when they're cut out okay so we're back in the studio we've cut our basic book nook pieces so we've got the back and the two sides and we've also got the base and the top and here's where we've got two, I would say two distinct options, but you can do whatever combination that you like. The first option is very much like the medieval book nook in that you could have a window set, a window wall, partially down the book nook. So you kind of have, it's hard to hold them there, the entrance and you look into the book nook and then you have this window and you're looking through it and this is backlit. And this, if you did that, you'd want to cut out a door exactly as we did in the medieval version, hinge that so that you can access the battery pack and lights. And in exactly the same way, you would have LED strips around there and then you could put your tree silhouettes in front of that and if you wanted to diffuse the light even more, use some, I've got white tissue paper here, you could use vellum, and that would create a really nice effect. And you would then make your little graveyard scene in front of that, or behind it, it's up to you. So you would have the light from behind the trees coming forward. Then you would put your window wall, like we did in the medieval version, and then you have your scene coming forward to the front of the book nook and you could have the frame like that. The way I'm going to do this is different again because I already did it that way for the medieval ones. So I thought I'd show you a different way of doing it this time. I'm going to keep my back wall and this is just a sample. It's not the actual one that's going in there. I'm going to build the chimney breast on the back wall um, probably going to put either the stove or an open fire in and the stove file is coming out first in November so if you do want to have a wood burning stove and we'll actually show you also how we light it with the flipper flame and the flames and everything in there you could have that too so bear that in mind and then we're going to create the room here if you can imagine you might have a little occupant there uh, with a cauldron casting her spells and my window wall is going to go towards the front this time not towards the back so we have the window where you can see through and we've created the sash window so that'll look quite cute then we will have the graveyard scene And then I'm going to have my tree silhouettes. So it's kind of like we're looking through a forest, through a graveyard, and then into the spooky cottage in the woods. Um, and you could also, if you wanted to, reinforce that and make it an actual opening door, or you could fix it in place. So that's the version we're going to be doing over the next 13 days and also make some of the things to go in it. So I'd like us to get, maybe that we can have a go at making it an occupant too, um, and some other things, maybe some polymer clay pumpkins if you haven't made something like that before. So I hope that's given you some ideas. Have a good think about which way round you'd like to do it, or maybe you'll come up with a different way altogether. If in doubt, I'd say cut all the pieces out so you can literally play around with them um, I think it's much easier that way and then join me tomorrow when we start to look at decorating them and installing the window which is so much easier to do whilst everything's flat like this we've also got some really cute wallpapers if you'd like to try and have a go at printing your own so we'll cover that tomorrow thank you for joining me this evening and I'll see you soon